Hey everyone, Dr. Manesh Gurun here, your personal psychedelic neuroscientist. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the latest topics in psychedelics, neuroscience, mental health, and everything in between. In today's video, I'll be diving into a neuroscience-backed microdosing protocol. What to consider, why, and the science behind it all. Microdosing is not just about taking tiny amounts of psychedelics. It's about building a system a set of habits, practices, and conditions that work with the substance to rewire your brain and reshape your life. What I'm about to share is for educational and harm reduction purposes only. It's not medical advice and I'm not encouraging anyone to break the law. All right, let's dive in. Let's start with the science. For a while, the mainstream view was that microdosing's benefits were just placebo. And I covered the evidence for this in a video from a couple years back. Essentially, studies found that people did benefit from microdosing, but so did those people who got a sugar pill thinking they were getting a microdose. The really important thing though, is that these early studies were very short and didn't really match how people actually microdose in the real world. They gave participants a single microdose in a lab setting and had them fill out questionnaires and do cognitive tasks. This is a far cry from how people actually microdose in real life where they take it on a regular basis on some kind of regimen and incorporate it into their day-to-day -day life. But more recently, higher quality studies have started emerging. These use real-world protocols like microdosing three times a week over a six-week period and are starting to show some effects that are greater than placebo, including improved mood, enhanced focus, and enhanced creativity. And then there's a lived reality that's been captured in many survey studies. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people have reported a wide range of benefits from microdosing. From better emotional regulation and improved mood, to better creativity and productivity, to having a deeper meditation practice and spiritual connection. This was all wonderfully documented in the brand new book from the father of microdosing, Dr. Jim Fadiman, and his co-writer, Jordan Gruber. I've had the great pleasure of meeting and connecting with both of them in the past few months, and they've done an excellent job laying out the microdosing landscape in this new book. All of that said, here's the key insight that I've learned. Microdosing is a catalyst, not a crutch. Just like full macrodoses, it doesn't do the work for you. It creates a window of neurobiological openness that you can then leverage to make change in your life. From a neuroscience standpoint, psychedelics activate the serotonin 2A receptor in the brain, which increases your brain's sensitivity to your immediate environment and the actions that you're taking and boosts your neuroplasticity. That's why we say psychedelics are non-specific amplifiers. They don't tell your brain what to do. They just turn the volume up on what's already there. This is why set and setting applies even to microdoses. If your habits are anxious, distracted, and disorganized, microdosing may amplify that. If your environment is not supportive, microdosing may make you more sensitive to that. But if you're in positive spaces and meditating, reflecting, moving your body and living with intention, it can deepen and reinforce these practices that support the life that you wanna have. Think of microdosing as watering the soil of your life. You can water it all you like, but it's the seeds you plant, AKA your behaviors, routines, and mindset that actually determine what grows. This is why we should view microdosing as a synergistic medicine. It synergizes with everything else you're doing in your life and amplifies its influence on you. As I mentioned, microdosing shouldn't be the main event. It should be one component of a larger system. That includes supplements that support brain health and neuroplasticity, things like lion's mane, omega-3s, magnesium, mitochondrial supplements like NAD plus or CoQ10, and anti-inflammatory adaptogens like rhodiola and curcumin. It's also extremely important to prioritize great sleep, a regular exercise routine, a daily meditation or breathwork practice of some kind, and a diet that consists of nutrient-rich whole foods and that avoids inflammatory processed foods. All of this is essential. I dive into this much more in my Rewire Your Brain Blueprint, which you can find a link to in the description. Essentially, microdoses increases your brain's demand for resources. Your brain wants to rewire and adapt, but if you're nutrient deficient, inflamed, or sleep deprived, that process just gets blocked. 
Microdosing without lifestyle optimization is like pressing the gas pedal in a car with no fuel. The health of your brain and mind is inextricably intertwined with the health of your body. These are not separate things. An unhealthy body leads to a rigid and inflexible brain and mind. You've probably heard the phrase, what fires together, wires together. That's what's called Hebbian learning, the foundation of how new brain patterns form. So here is a critical neuroscience-based truth. Whatever you repeat during a microdosing period gets encoded more deeply. If you use that time to practice stillness, focus, and emotional regulation, those neural circuits get stronger. But the same applies to distraction, doom scrolling, negativity, or any unhealthy habit. Microdosing isn't just a boost, it's an amplifier of identity. You're reinforcing the version of yourself that you're rehearsing on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's my neuroscientific take on microdosing and why I treat it as part of a synergistic system, not a standalone hack. It's all about tuning your brain into the life you actually want to live. If this gave you a new way to think about microdosing, give it a like, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more grounded, science-based content on psychedelics and transformation. Always check in with a licensed healthcare professional before making any decisions about your health. This is Dr. Manesh and your psychedelic neuroscientist, signing off.